Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today is a fun fold called a slide and lock. As you can see, you can slide it and open it up and then it slides right back in there. It's got a cute little mechanism there, slide and lock. And I'm trying not, to, there we go. Um, you can adjust it to wherever you want it to be. And isn't that fun? We're gonna be using a new stamp set in the January through April mini catalog 2023 by Stamping Up. It is the legendary ride. Oh, I love it when they put a motorcycle in there. Because even if you have another motorcycle, that's just a great, great card for those who love to ride motorcycles. Um, so Legendary Ride comes with the stamp set and the bundle with the dies, Legendary Ride. I'm going to be using this die that cuts out this large, larger motorcycle here and the flames there. So a little hot rod. Okay, so let's take a look here at this um, beautiful paper called Ride... What is that paper called? It is called Ride On. Wait, I have it right here. Ready to Ride. Um, Ready to Ride. And it's got pumpkin pie in there, that classic orange with Harley Davidson. And soft suede, very vanilla, basic gray, basic black, and black foil. I mean, look at this gorgeous paper here. Look at all the black foil patterns here on the opposite sides of the regular pattern. Now, do I have it? One, two, three four, five, six. Yes. Yeah, so you've got the roses, the tire treads, and some tools, some bolts, and that checkered flag, and that kind of um, metal look there that, that's usually a chrome. And you've got the great um, little motifs there for motorcycles. And like I said, that pumpkin pie. So we're going to be using this awesome paper. I love that paper. And so we're going to also be using this metal 3D embossing folder that creates this really fun pattern here like like that chrome that's on those tool toolboxes you can move around so I really uh, think that added a lot to this card so simple to make this card let's get started here I'm gonna pull out my scoring tool here and I'm just gonna start with a piece of eight and a half by five and a half all the directions for the cutting measurements and the products I use are on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. If you go underneath the YouTube description, you'll see visit my blog. Press that link. It'll take you over there. Additional photos for you to see after you watch the video. Also online links to my store, which are also underneath the YouTube description. So we are going to start here with this eight and a half inch side at the top. And we're going to score it at one and a half. One and a half, and again at eight and a half. Oh no, five and three quarters. I was like, make sure you have those so you don't mess up, Cindy, and then you did. So on the eight and a half inch side at the top, we're at one and a half and five and three quarters. There we go. Let me put that little tool back. Okay, and so this is essentially the card base. And I decided to use this lower portion here, as you can see, to put my tire treads. I just thought that looked really cool with the motif that's in the Ready to Ride DSP. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this. Since this is one and a half, we're gonna go down to one and a quarter. And I just packed up all of my products to go to a stamping event and so I used I took my glue that is working for me so let's just see if I should just throw away that should be my new year's resolution go through the seven glues that are open on my desk <laughs> so there we go we're just going to put those tire treads right there on that bottom portion sometimes you have to finagle your card to just Get it there we go so there's our treads that are going to be on the bottom of the card and then this upper part of the card i'm using a this, oh no that's our motorcycle here i'm like whoa this is um two and a half by five and a quarter so it fits on that upper part just gives that whole scene there so i love that but i do hate to put glue on this black foil ah but normally this wouldn't have been my pattern to pick but on this card it really, really works well for this style of card. So there we go. We have our front of our card. And you know what? Let me show you what the inside of this card looks like. Once you take off this 
mechanism here. I just put classic authentic you since forever. This could end up being a thank you card, a birthday card, whatever you write in there makes the card. So why don't we just go ahead and take a look at that piece there. And it is sitting over here. And that is just um, your typical five and a quarter by four to fit in there. So we'll just go ahead and ink up. And I'm gonna go ahead and use that same, just kind of a generic, generic sentiment that you can make that card anything you would like. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the middle because it just looks good in the middle. But sometimes I'll put my sentiments in the corner so you can write your message better. <laughs> so then we're gonna put some glue. And like I said, I only put little bits of glue on the edges because when you squiggle, you get bumps. And I will tell you right now, anytime you're using like a navy or a black, it will rub off. It The color on the papers and when they get the card, they're gonna have some rubbing. So I would suggest even putting a piece of copy paper from your computer, just the same size, because this will rub off. I've um, received cards that are gatefolds and then I'll see a little black line there. So, you know, you've taken the time to make this pretty card. When your recipient gets it, they're not gonna think anything of that extra little piece in there. You could put a piece of tissue in there, uh, a piece of toilet paper, whatever you want to do to put across that because it then ends up um, protecting the inside of the card. So there our card base is made. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, so now let me show you a little trick of how I cut out our little motorcycle here, okay? So I first made a little template, okay? This is my trick to get um, a perfect cut. So I make my template and um, technically, I could have done it in very vanilla, but I really wanted to see the contrast of the paper because I am going to end up putting very vanilla behind my DSP motorcycle to give it some, um, make it more sturdy. But I wanted to have something that I could see here. So what I do is I take that die cut and I make a, I make sure that it's a perfect um, outline around there then I can just put it onto my cutting plate for my stamp and cut and emboss machine and I can pull out that motorcycle and usually it'll stay right in place when you put this in here but just to be safe I usually put another little bit of you'll feel it kind of click into place it'll, it'll click into that template but I like to put a little bit especially with the DSP because you have one shot to get that really nice. So now we're just gonna take this through our, here, let's take a look at this. Let's, I'm gonna, where is my plate? Where's the plate? Where, where to put the top plate? Did you ever lose that top plate because it is, um, <laughs> it's invisible? <laughs> oh, cause it's clear and okay. So now I'm just going to roll that through you have a lot of different um, motorcycles in that DSP, but only a few of them are cut out with this die. But these are, they would be really easy to fussy cut because they don't have a lot of fussiness to them. So then we can bring this back and you'll notice when I pop that out, I have a nice, perfect outline on there. It didn't, it didn't shift or anything on me. So that is a fun way to get a good cut. Now, it's not only with designer series paper that you can do that. We're gonna do that with our, our little piece of uh, the flames coming out the back of the motorcycle. So we're just gonna look at that stamp right there. We're gonna pull that little cutie out, put it on a block. And once again, use some memento black, and we're gonna ink that up. Okie dokie. Doesn't really matter which way you do that. One, two, three, there we go. Okay, we've got that little smoke there. And then I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna take my plate, and I'm just going to Put that die cut I made right and 
I am not kidding you. I do this with almost everything I stamp because I, oh, well, you have to put the die in because I've also done that a few times. I've actually went over there and then I roll it through and then I realize, oh, you have to put that die in there. So once again, you'll feel it go into place and then you just get a little bit of something to keep it in place. But I find myself doing this with almost every stamp set I have when I'm die cutting. And then just keep that template uh, in your stamp case. So when you know the next time you're gonna cut out that image, you have a little template already cut. So here we go. Well, you'll see that's missing there. This is sticking to my well-used, well-loved acrylic plate. Always a good thing to have a couple of those acrylic plates in, see that ends up making a template too, in your in your um, extra ones because you can easily need one or you're making uh, a project that needs a clean look and no scrumpies on the back of it. And so you'll have that. I don't know why I decided to reconstruct that. Okay, so we have our two pieces here that are gonna create that fun focal point on the front of the card. Now we're going to use some pieces here. We're gonna need two pieces of black, two and a quarter by four and a quarter. And everything, you know, you start a video and everything is like perfectly placed on your desk and then you start playing around. So two, there it is. So we need two of these, two and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then the front here is of course gonna be two by four because we just went down an eighth of an inch on each side. So those are gonna be our panels that get that gets built up on the front of the card. But to create this little sliding mechanism, you can cut the exact same size as your piece here. So you could cut this two and a quarter by four and a quarter. But I don't wanna take any risk of something sticking out the edge. So what I did is I did pick the coordinating color that I'm using, the very vanilla, and I cut it a little bit smaller than this, two by four. And then I'm going to just score this. And you would make these measurements according to what your panel looks like. So if your panel, uh, it would be different with you know, if you have a circle, you might use a little bit smaller of a circle, but what you're gonna do essentially is cut, um, score it in half, okay? Score it in half, two pieces in half. Now, like I said, if I was using a square, maybe it was a three inch square, I might go down to two and seven eighths and I make two of them and I go halfway, make the halfway measurement. This actually was very easy to do because I just um, used that two by four. So now I have these um, two by four. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold them back and burnish them really nice and straight there. And that's two of them. Now you can use your tear and tape or something, but I find it super easy just to grab some good old Scotch tape Make it easy on yourself and put these two. Now look, do you see those? You took both of those, scored them, put them in half, and now you're taking the folded edges, putting them towards the middle. And now I'm just putting a piece of scotch tape there. And then I'm gonna put one on the other side of the card. Okay, there we go. Now we are going to put this together and then put that together. So let's go and put some glue on the back of this two by four. And I did run that through with this new embossing folder, the Metal 3D. I like it. So it fits right in. You know what, when I did this, it might have been just a tad. It was, on, this piece was sitting on my well. That's okay, I'm not gonna fret. No, you, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just cut it down just a tad on the one side, even though I just put glue on it, darn. I'm just gonna cut it down I don't know if that tad's gonna work or not, but it won't matter, let me see. I think it needs cut down another little 
little bit. I just assumed that that, that piece was the leftover piece when I cut the other one. So all we're doing is just cutting it down so the so it has an e equal border the whole way around. But with the measurements, it's going to be two by four. Okay. And then I, as I said, I took and put behind this just something that was a little bit stronger here. So this gave me the ability to pop that up. And I mean, on this card, it probably wasn't necessary, but it's just DSP has uh, a lighter weight to it. So if you put something behind it, it's gonna have just, it's gonna be more sturdy. And then we're going to use some dimensionals here. Get into the bottom of these dimensionals here. I have so many of these little edges left over. When we do classes, I sometimes say, okay, today we're using up our leftovers. But my girls, when they stamp and they use their dimensionals, they love a new pack. Don't get me wrong, but they are so good about using up all our little scraps. They're like, let's use up the scraps. Okay, there we go. So we are using up our scraps. So we're going to put that onto the front of our card. And you'll notice when I made that, I did bring the tire over a little bit and then push the flames because it kind of looks cool because you don't want this to be too big so that it sits on the card nicely. So I just put it so that I think I put it a little bit over there and I kept it down towards the bottom a little bit so that you're going to see the tires go down towards the treads. And then for this one, I just glued this one. I didn't pop it up, I don't think. No, I didn't. So you can be a little generous there with that glue. And you'll just pop that under the bottom. There we go. Oop, I got some glue there. Okay, now here's the magic. We're going to take this and put on here, okay? I suggest not using glue right now because it will um, take a little longer of a dry time. So we're just gonna use our tear and tape or you could use your Stampin' uh, Seal Plus. It's a nice, really strong hold. So we'll just put our tear and tape. I love this stuff. Oh. My one friend Kay uses it on everything. The only thing is, is if you have to pull it up, <laughs> you have to pull it up. Um, but she has all these tricks too. She puts like that gooby gone on things and she just saturates the whole card and then it actually does work. So get the stuff off. So there we go. We're just gonna cover that middle again. And of course you could have done that when you did that instead of using scotch tape, but just think about trying to get that right in the middle and ah. Uh, to me, I'm like, nah, that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna just, ooh, my snips are, here, let's just pull this back a little bit. My snips are packed off my desk because I'm going to a little stamping thing. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just pull off our, I literally packed everything off my desk. Um, okay, so we're just gonna pull off the tear and tape. There we go. And I have an ink pad open and it's driving me crazy. Just saying that I'm going to get something on it. Okay. I'll get these off of here. Oh, here's a pokey. Here's an old stamp and pierce piercer. Get these little pieces off of here so we can get that adhered and get this motorcycle rolling. Okay. So like I said, this one is a little bit smaller. Some people like to make it exactly the same size, but I feel like if I center it on here, then I don't have any chance of it going over the edge. So you can see that it's connected to the front. And now we're gonna take this piece off, these pieces off of here. And like I said, it's just easier to use an adhesive like this, a strong adhesive that's a tape runner or tear and tape because it would just take longer for the glue to. And then all you have to do is line up 
your black so that it is in the right place. There we go. Adhere that down. And you've got your black and your black. Now you'll notice you have this little mechanism in here, right? See that? See that mechanism? Put it this way. There we go. And so what we're gonna do is pop that onto the front of the card. All right. So you just put it into one side of the card and put it into the other side. Okay, let's get that. Um, hold, I need, I need your hands. Could you guys help me? Wish you could reach through here. There we go. Get those hands working. So there and there, oh, and here. I was gonna say, make sure my motorcycle is going in the right direction. Okay, there we go, and it just slides in there. And usually when I'm sliding it, I kind of push it this way, and then you've got your thing. Now, you'll notice here, though, it's got a little bit of a bowing to it, a little puffiness. So easy fix for that is just push it back down, push your card back down, and just give yourself a burnish on those edges and see it goes back down flat. There we go. Okay, so there you go, and your, you can slide and lock here. You can do this with so many different cards, and then you just slide it, and it goes back on. And it's kind of cool with the motorcycle because he does slide. I do find, though, that he slides a little easier, but isn't that cool, sliding across there? And so you could do this with any, any, any um, sized image and focal point. Just put that mechanism that's whatever it is. If it's a circle, you would cut two circles and cut them, fold them in half, fold those circles in half. I did make one of these previously. I'll link to it, but isn't that cute? Especially if it's a guy um, who likes, um, you know, fun cards like that. But there's so many girls out there that love to ride motorcycles. My sister-in-law would love this. And you just put that in there. So, especially like a lot of girls who do love to ride motorcycles really are so handy with all kinds of things. So they really would enjoy this card. So once again, we've got this gorgeous paper. I can't get off that table, but look at this beautiful foil and these motorcycles on the other side. I love that they has that soft suede and it has those touches of uh, pumpkin pie that just kind of make us think of that um, Harley Davidson colors. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to text me 724-323-2296 or give me a call. You can email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. Subscribe to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. You'll be notified whenever I post, usually on Wednesdays. Now that is a post coming from WordPress, my blog server. So if you have a question, um, about the card, you can comment on that. But if you have a question for me of a personal nature or credit card information or things like that, you would want to email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.